Hi there, Marty Van Deest here with Valley Market Real Estate in Palmer, Alaska, and I'm here to talk about heating your house with a wood stove. But before I get started, I'd like to just say, if you want to hear more about our company, Valley Market Real Estate, just go to valleymarket.com, click on the contact tab, and you can see all the different people we have in our office. Every single one of them would be happy to help you. Read the bio below them. You'll find out that many of them have been born and raised right here in this area. I wasn't born here. I grew up out in the boonies, and that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit in this video, because uh, I grew up heating with wood, and uh, I've had the good and the bad. So let me talk about them both and give you some tips on what to do for heating with wood in your house. And of course, this is a fantastic day to talk about it. It's about 10 to 15 below zero here. Other parts of Alaska, it's 45 to 65 below zero right now. This is Holokachuk, Alaska, where I grew up. You can see it's a cold day and everybody's burning wood. Holokachuk is on the banks of the Inoko River. And pretty much the only thing to burn there is spruce and birch. You can also burn cottonwood if you need it. We called that spring wood back in the day. This is my grandmother, Dorothy Norrin, standing in front of the wood pile. My dad hauled all that wood in by dog team. He said we burned between 12 and 15 cords a winter. Notice that is pretty much all green birch. And that's my first tip. If possible, dry your wood for one whole year before using it. You need to get the moisture out of it. But we didn't have that luxury back in the day. This is my brother Jay in front of his woodshed. And this is the way you're supposed to keep wood. So you can see that he has a good stack of wood. It's already split. dries much faster that way. Sorry you can't hear it. This is from a market memo that he did last winter, I guess. Must have been snowing hard. If you can keep your wood under cover, already split, you'll get a lot more heat out of it. And you will have fewer stack fires because it will create less creosote. This is a stack fire in my other brother's house, Mark's house. Picture was just taken last week. Classic stack fire. But he does this almost every week because he's designed his system for it. That stove pipe is a well casing that runs all the way up from his wood stove, which is 28 feet below the peak, and goes through his roof in a very safe manner. Most people will not like that. This is our house in Hoakachuk, taking probably about 1959, maybe 1960, right in there. And this was before the fire. Here's the same house after the fire. I think I must have been about nine years old. I was up early with my dad. I had to use the outhouse. My sisters got to use the porta potty inside, but not me. So we were up early. My dad smelled smoke, so he went upstairs to investigate and then yelled down the stairs at me to go get help because the house is on fire. So I took off out of the house with my jacket on, one boot on, and just socks on the other feet in the middle of winter. I think the date was February 2nd. And went from house to house. Almost no one was up. And finally I got to the river bank and somebody invited me in and said, Marty, everybody already knows about your house on fire. And I looked back toward where our house was and I could see it across the village, a big red glow. Actually, the person that invited me in was Bertha Rock. I have her picture on my shelf in my office. There she is, right at the bank of the Anoka River, cleaning fish. So while wood stoves are a fantastic way to heat your home, and a good alternative to gas, electric, and oil, especially when rates rise or are in short supply, you want to heat with wood, but it can also completely destroy your home. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and some more about the wood that you want to use. Back in the day, almost everyone used wood stoves like this. These were barrel stoves. You could just get a kit and make a stove out of any old barrel. And But some people had more upgraded pot-bellied stoves. As things went along, however, we got better and better. And some of the stoves that are out there now are really nice. You can get stoves now with catalytic burners. So it'll burn the wood in the stove and then it'll burn the smoke as it comes out of the stove. It's really hard to beat that. You can get a lot of heat out of one quart of wood these days. So burn dry wood 
Make sure you keep your stovepipe cleaned, and a brush works better than a fire. Make sure you have plenty of room between your stove and anything that can combust. And also keep children away from it. A lot of people put some type of a barrier, maybe a little fence, in front of their stove if you have young kids. I have a bad burn on the back of my hand from running into a barrel stove myself. So get your wood, split it up, keep it covered, let it season for a year, and burn it cleanly. And it will help you in the long run, especially during these cold winters. Oh, and don't bother looking for Holokachuk on the Anoko River. It isn't there anymore. So my old hometown moved to the Yukon River, as you can see here. This is Grayling. This is the new town. Holokachuk moved to Grayling and made themselves a little town right on the banks of the Yukon River. Most of those people now burn oil, but look at all that wood around them. Plenty of wood to burn. So call us here at Valley Market Real Estate. We will help you out. Just go to valleymarket.com, click on the team, you'll see everybody in the office. Give somebody a call, almost everybody in this office has used wood for heat.